Polaroid or polarizing sunglasses are more than just ordinary dark glasses. They're a little bit like picket fences. And when light is reflected from a flat surface such as the surface of the water, all of the light is vibrating in a horizontal plane. So if you have your sunglasses on sideways, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but if you did, it's a bit like having your picket fence on the side. The light reflections will come straight through. However, when you put them on the right way around, it's like putting the picket fence the right way around. The reflections are now stopped by the pickets. And that's the sort of thing that happens when you wear sunglasses that are polarizing filters in a situation like this where you're hunting for sunken treasure or shipwrecks. Why don't you try my sunglasses and see if you can see the effect. Keep your eye on this area of the water. You've got them on the wrong way around. Turn them around slowly and see if you can see anything under the water in this region here. Aha! Uh -huh. How about that? We've discovered bits and pieces of a shipwreck. Over here, we seem to have a pipe, an old iron pipe, encrusted with coral and shellfish and all sorts of other things. Here, there's something also lighter in colour, very, very heavy, Yes, it's a piece of lead, lead ballast from a ship. And in the centre, among all the other bits and pieces, I can see a lump of coral that looks a little different from your normal lump of coral, because attached to the other side, it has a teapot. So I think we've discovered a shipwreck. But the problem is only partly solved. What we have to do now is to work out how old these bits and pieces are and what ship they came from. You don't often find the name of a shipwreck. It's seldom as easy as that. But if you're lucky, you may find the name of the company that ran her. This is the badge of the Adelaide Steamship Company, and it shows that these plates are from the wreck of the Yongala, which went down with all hands. But it's usually harder. All of this is from a mystery ship. It's not been identified yet, but there are some clues that will help. These are copper keel bolts, and they'll date the ship to some extent. And if you can find a piece of machinery, like this bilge pump, it may have a maker's name, or its design might help again. In fact, this ship had French fittings, and so it's possibly a French ship, although it carried English ballast in the form of lead ingots. So, English ship with French fittings or French ship with English ballast, we don't know, and the search goes on. But in fact, it's often what a ship carries that is very important in deciding what the shipwrecks of. For example, Charles Eaton was known to be carrying 400 of these lead ingots, and once they were found, the shipwreck was identified. Occasionally, the shipwreck hunter stumbles across intriguing puzzles which are solved quickly. What do you think this is? It's made of metal, no markings on the outside, and it has a strong screw-top lid. It's a biscuit tin, and although it's spent 80 years under the water as part of a shipwreck, it's still airtight, and the biscuits are quite fresh. Fairly fresh. That was part of a survival kit from a lifeboat which sank off the coast of Queensland. And here's another part of a survival kit of a lifeboat. This is a can of oil. And the oil was used, believe it or not, to pour into the water to calm the waves down as the survivors clambered aboard. That's how we got the saying, pouring oil on troubled waters. And the oil is still quite fresh as well. So being a shipwreck hunter, searching for shipwrecks and explaining them is very much like detective work looking for clues filling in gaps solving problems it's a fascinating occupation